With Emacs, there are a couple ways to automate repetitive tasks. We'll look at one of them called keyboard macros. Let's start with a simple exercise. List the users on the current Unix system. This could be solved with shell commands. The list of users is inside of Etsy password. If you haven't seen a password file before, here's what it looks like. Each line is a list of columns, and so we can cut the first column, here delimited by a colon. From this file, uh, we'll take the first field, Etsy password, and take a look at the result. The result is almost perfect, except for these first two comment lines, which weren't removed. We could remove these manually or by inserting a tail call somewhere into this command, but this is really just an ad hoc task, and it's one where using Emacs's keyboard macros seems like a good choice. First in Emacs, we'll open the Etsy password file. Next, we'll take just the lines that we're interested in here, copy them, and I'll use the scratch buffer for this, which is something I do commonly when working with keyboard macros on some data. The idea behind a keyboard macro is to record some sequence of actions and then replay them, usually more than once. We'll begin recording the macro with Control X, open parentheses. Next, we want to skip forward to the colon and then kill everything to the end of the line. Finally, we can stop recording the keyboard macro with Control X, close parentheses. And Emacs tells us that we have now defined a keyboard macro. Next, we'll move down to the next line, to the beginning of the line, and press Control X, E to replay the keyboard macro. And we can move to the next line and do the same. Moving to each line like this is a bit tedious, so we can re-record the keyboard macro with these steps in mind so that we can replay the macro and have it end up where it needs to start off for the next iteration. Let's move down to the next line and re-record the macro. Again, in Control X, open parentheses. We'll move forward, we'll kill. This time, while still recording the macro, we'll move down to the next line and to the beginning of the line. And instead of pressing Control X, close parentheses to stop recording the macro, we can just press Control X, E to both stop recording the macro and execute it once. Control X, E executes it again. And Emacs is telling us that we can just, from this point on, keep pressing E to keep repeating the macro. If we hold down E, we can move through the rest of the file pretty quickly. But if you were paying attention, you'll notice that there was an error. I'm going to undo this macro a couple times with control slash. And here, git is not the git user. It's actually git daemon. When we run our macro with control X E, it removes the underscore and daemon and everything following that. We haven't properly generalized the keyboard macro for the data we're getting. I'll undo this one more time. And in this case, meta f just moves forward to the underscore. It treats it sort of like a white space character in terms of what a word is. To fix this, let's more closely match what our shell command from earlier was doing. And this time, when recording the keyboard macro, instead of moving forward a word, I'm going to use Control S to search for the colon. Press Return to end the search. Note here that pressing Control G to end the search would actually stop recording the keyboard macro, so you need to press Return. Now, Control B to move back one character, and then Control K to kill the rest of the line. We'll move to the next line, and the beginning of the line as before and start executing our macro again. 
And to be sure that this is actually working, let me undo everything here and try running it again through all of the users. Keyboard macros are not limited to working with lines of data. They can record arbitrary actions. Another useful example to show this is extracting data from a web page. We'll take a look at the YouTube page for the .emacs series, and I'd like to extract all of the hyperlinks to all of the episodes. Let's use Firefox Developer Tools to inspect this element, and then try and find an element that contains every episode in the list. This table looks like a candidate. Let's scroll down and make sure Okay, so we'll select the table and then copy the inner HTML for the table. Then back in Emacs, let's paste all of that HTML and begin working on a new keyboard macro. Similar to the early example of finding users, there's a regular pattern in this HTML for the hyperlinks and that is an href. I'll start recording a keyboard macro and then I'm going to set a mark because when we search for the href we're going to end up on another line and I want to delete everything from here up until then so let's start the search and look for href I want to also uh, skip over the equal and quotation mark now I'll finish the search with return and then control W will cut everything that we've marked to find the end of the link, we can search for the closing quotation mark, return, move back a character as in the earlier macro. And to set this up for the next iteration, let's go ahead and just move down to the next line. Now, Control X E will save the macro and run it once. And I can keep pressing E to keep extracting hyperlinks. But something unexpected is happening here. Some of these hyperlinks are duplicated, and there are some that are not links to videos. Let's try to figure out what's going on by using a built-in debugger for keyboard macros. We'll press Control X, Control K, Space, which allows us to step through the keyboard macro. This buffer shows us the commands that are part of the macro, and gives us some options on how to proceed. I'm going to press question mark to bring up a more detailed list of explanations for the options. I'll press space to move to the next step of the macro, which is I search forward. Space again is for the H key, then the R key, but already something looks uh, a little bit strange. The interactive search has stopped. This is because this interactive debugging is interfering with the interactive search. This will only be a problem for your keyboard macro if you're using some other interactive mode at the same time. But let's go ahead and fix it because it gives us a good chance to use the macro editor. To enter that, first let's uh, quit the interactive debugging. Let's uh, undo this R and move back to the beginning of the line just to keep things clean. And then press Control X, Control K, and then E to edit the macro. We'll just press return here to edit the most recently recorded macro. And I happen to know that pressing return after Control S uses a non-interactive search. So with both searches fixed, I'll press Control C, Control C to finish editing, and then Control X, Control K, space, uh, question mark again, and the debugger or the step editor is ready to go. Now let's step through. Uh, I search forward now becomes I search exit, and now H R E F. Uh, all these characters are not being put into the buffer, uh, but instead the uh, search completes here. We end up at another href, 
which we kill everything before, uh, start another non-interactive search to the end of it, uh, move back, and the macro completes as we'd expect it to. So the macro appears to be working correctly. Uh, to solve this, you might have guessed it already. In the HTML, if we look at um, this here, the thumbnail, and this text link here are both hyperlinks uh, to the same location. And then my username is uh, another hyperlink here. And we only want one hyperlink for each item for the URL for the video. Let's undo what we've done uh, back to the beginning of this buffer so that we can rethink our approach to it. And one way to solve this is to look for something that uniquely identifies this hyperlink. So let's inspect this again. And uh, right here, it's part of this TD with a class PL video title. This time, when I record the macro, I'm going to search for PL video title. I'm still using interactive search here, even though it does mess with the debugger because it gives me some assurance that what I'm doing is correct. I can see these steps taking place. So next, I'll look for the next href and uh, cut everything to there, finish the uh, macro op as before. And now we're getting a list of unique URLs. And as we get to the bottom of this buffer, because of the way the macro is recorded, the search fails and it leaves us here, uh, which means we're pretty much out of text to process, so I'll just cut the rest. And this should be a list of the eight videos in the playlist so far, and you can verify that here. If extracting links from HTML is something that you need to do often, you may want to be able to save this macro for later. Let's save the more general version we used earlier, rather than this one specific to the structure of the HTML on the YouTube page. We didn't save the more general macro that we had earlier, but we can use the macro editor like we did before and remove this part here, which specialized it, uh, and save it. And now we want to name the macro with Control X, Control K again, this time N for name. And we'll call it uh, Extract Next Hyperlink. Now, to test this out, let's get some more HTML. I'll use the GNU. Uh, list of software here. Let's view source for this page and uh, select all. Uh, copy because Firefox works a little differently than old X applications. And now, although we could call the command uh, the keyboard macro with Control X E. We can also use meta x and then the name of the keyboard macro, which was extract next hyperlink. And as before with keyboard macros, we can uh, use control x e and then e to continue repeating this macro. And rather than holding down e to go through the rest of this buffer, we can use the infinite prefix, which is control u zero and then control X E, which ran the macro 562 times before it was terminated by an error showing that we ran out of uh, text to match here. This macro will last for the current session. If we want it to always be available, let's add it to our .emacs file. Uh, right after the uh, grepalot setup should be fine. And here we'll use the command insert keyboard macro. Give it the name for our macro. And it inserts it into the buffer as Emacs Lisp code. Now, if we save this, 
each time Emacs starts and evaluates the .emacs file, it will make this uh, metax extract next hyperlink command be available. There's a couple more things that you might find useful with keyboard macros. One is to create a macro out of some commands that you've already run. Maybe you don't want to repeat them or you've already forgotten what they are. You can press Control X, Control K, L to bring up a list of some of your recent commands and use that to build a macro. If you'd like to learn even more about keyboard macros, I recommend reading the source directly for your copy of Emacs with MetaX Find Library. And the keyboard macro uh, functionality, at least as of this version, is named KMacro. And this file here is the one that is actually used by Emacs uh, for the keyboard macro functionality. So there's the, uh, the key bindings here. There's some information on inserting numbers based on which iteration of the keyboard macro that you're on, and some more advanced topics. You can also look for the uh, library code for Ed Macro, which is the macro editor. And it gives a, uh, a more thorough explanation of what kind of commands and characters are expected in that buffer when you're doing editing. If you have a use for keyboard macros other than what I've shown here, please add a comment because I'd like to see it and I'm sure others would as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.